today our lesson is 3.5 that's a generation transmission of the electricity this one is the last topic for your chapter 3 so they just uh, one of the short topics and also one of the formula okay let's see the notes now okay now we're going to see the first one there's an electrical energy uh, that's a not a natural and also the primary sources of the energy Okay, you can say about the electrical energy uh, that's come from the uh, from the surrounding, that's from the renewable energy, uh, renewable sources. You also can say this is not a natural because it come from the non-renewable also. Okay, now we're going to see the primary source of the energy. This one, electrical energy is a one of the primary source. Okay, let's see some example here. Okay, it cannot be stored and also uh, cannot be created. You cannot can be destroyed some more. So this one we can say there's a store for very easily. Cannot be stored for very easily. So that means you cannot say I keep the energy for a long time. So you can store for a while. Now we can charge is it. So they can store for a while but you cannot stay of store uh, for the long time easily. So now we're going to see the sources of the energy. Source of energy, they got two classification. Okay, they got non-renewable, another one is a renewable. Okay, non-renewable, everybody they know, they sure it's a fossil, nu uh, the nuclear fuel, and also you can say about the coal, you can say about the natural gas, you can say about the petroleum, uh, that one is a non-renewable. Okay, after you finish, they mean no more already. You need to create, uh, maybe you wait thousand years ago, uh, after that they will come out. Okay, after that, the renewable source, that means after you use, they still can renew by the natural. Example is a hydropower, they're using the water. Okay, number two is a solar energy. Okay, they're using the source from the sunlight. Okay, biomass. Okay, biomass by the food. Uh, after you pour the, the thing you don't like, they don't want, after that, you go and throw away. Are they all things they can uh, rechange back, become the biomass? After that, we got wind power from the windmill, geothermal energy from the heat below the ground. After that, we got wave energy. So this all we call it renewable uh, sources. Okay, now we're going to see the electrical energy that generated by the several wave. Okay, we see the process. Okay, normally the process they store the energy, fossil, nuclear, and biomass. So this whole thing, the whole thing is uh, renewable uh, non-renewable energy so non-renewable energy we're using the several way almost the same lah. let's see the first one they convert to the thermal energy because you need to heat okay you need to heat the fossil fuel after that they convert become the thermal energy after that they produce the steam okay the steam should be the high pressure steam okay after that they go return the turbine Okay, turn the turbine should be the kinetic energy. After that, they're going to generate the electricity. So from here, we see there's a chemical. Chemical is from your uh, renewable, uh, non-renewable energy. There's a fossil. After that, we got heat energy because you're going to burn. After that, they produce kinetic. Last one is uh, electric energy. So this one is a normal way the energy transfer from the renew, uh, non-renewable energy. So before that, I want to show about the diagram, about the renewable and non-renewable sample diagram. Okay, let's see here. Eh? So the first one, there's a non-renewable energy. So let's see here, we got fossil fuel. Okay, after that, we got nuclear. Okay, nuclear. After that, we got natural gas and also the charcoal. Okay, this all is called non-renewable energy. Okay, then we're going to see the renewable energy. Hydropower from the liquid, geothermal, okay, from the uh, the heat from the ground. We got wind energy. We got biomass. Okay, we got solar. So this all is from the renewable energy. Okay, now we continue our lesson. We're going to see the diagram again. Okay, now we're going to see the convert. How the energy they convert? Before that, we talking about the non-renewable energy must be heat up. Then the steam, turn the turbine, then generate electricity. Okay, now we're going to see another way for the hydro. 
hydro is a uh, renewable energy so they're using the gravitational potential energy okay hydro means water so normally they store the water in a high location so high location that means we got gravitational potential energy when they just release the water they will come down in a high velocity so this one we call it as a high, high kinetic energy Potential energy totally convert become the kinetic energy. After that, they turn the turbine. Turn the turbine, sure, is a kinetic energy again. So the last one, when you turn the turbine, they generate electricity. Normally, the behind, the last part should be the same. Because you turn the turbine, is a kinetic. Then the last one, sure, is a kinetic energy. Okay, let's see the wind. Okay, Kinetic energy of the wind turn, wind turbine, the generate. Okay, every time they're using to turn the turbine, generate electricity. So the wind uh, energy also same. They need to turn the windmill first. After that, produce uh, energy to turn the turbine. Then after that, generate electricity. Then number four, solar energy is transformed directly electrical energy by the solar cell. Okay, this one just received from the sunlight after that the convert becomes solar energy okay last one should be the chemical energy they transform directly into the electrical energy by accumulator so this one is a some example how the energy they go to generate by several way okay now we go see the first part generation of electricity from the various sources okay first one we call it there's a thermal power station Thermal power station means they're using the heat. Okay, using the heat to heat up. Normally, the heat up object must be the non-renewable sources. So from here, they got fuel, they got coal, petroleum, natural gas, and uranium. Uranium is for the nuclear energy. So from here, they must related with the heat energy produced by burning. So the water will absorb the heat energy in the boiling or the heat exchanger after that they turn using the high pressure steamer go to turn the turbine finally they can generate electricity so but this one high pressure steam that convert heat energy to the mechanical energy so from here the efficiency we just get 30 to 35 because you heat up maybe the heat will be lost so from here this one is the efficiency energy you can get it Okay, now we're going to see the diagram. See the generation from the power station. Uh, there's a thermal power station. Okay, let's see the diagram here. Okay, this one is a thermal power station. So from here starting, they are using the fuel and also the A because they need to boil, need to burn. After burn, they boil the water. Then the water become the high pressure steam, then turn the turbine. Okay, if you cannot turn the turbine, then you condensation back and repeat again. Ah. So after turn the turbine, they generate electricity. Okay, so this one is a process. Normally, it's a heat up. Okay, using the chemical energy. Then after that, heat energy. After using the heat energy, go and turn the turbine. So turn the turbine, we call it as a mechanical energy. Finally, it's an electrical energy. Okay, same as your diagram in your uh, the notes, also like this. Okay, using the chemical energy. The charcoal, the petrol, they go to burn. Burn the water, then the water boil. Produce a high pressure steam. Then the turbine turning. Turbine turning, after that, they will generate the electrical energy. So turbine turning should be the kinetic energy. Lah. Normally, the process is a chemical, then heat. After that, it's a kinetic. Then the last one is a electricity. Okay? So this one is an example for the thermal power station okay now we're going to see what is the disadvantages and also advantages from the thermal power station okay let's see the disadvantages first one we know because you need to burn is it when you need to burn that means sure it's a air pollution okay burning what you produce you produce the co2 so you produce the co2 means you can create the acid rain Okay, after that, you got green how effects are more. Then another one, this advantage, this one is a non-renewable. Okay, now we're going to see what is the advantages if we're using the 
for sale, we're using the charcoal. Okay, they can be transported one location to another location to be used. Example, the petroleum, the natural gas, you can transfer from one another station. Then after that, you can you can use for another location. Nah. So if I say I bring the wind energy, the wind energy, how to bring? We cannot bring, is it? They're just located at the same place. So this one is an advantage for using the non-renewable energy. Okay, now we go to see the renewable energy. There's a hydroelectric power station. Okay, hydroelectric power station means there's a water. Okay, where they collected the water, they collected at the high reservoir. After that, they process the high gravitational potential energy. So that means they store in a high location. So high location, we find it the potential energy, kinetic and also potential. So you want to create the kinetic energy become higher, potential must be higher first. So you store the height become increasing, so that means later you convert become kinetic energy also increasing. So from here EP, later we convert become the EK. So the kinetic energy of the water changes the electrical energy when the water turn the blade of the turbine. So still the same, you must let the water come down faster, then they turn the turbine, then after that they can generate electricity. So this one is uh, another energy convert, that from the gravitational become kinetic, then mechanical, and last one is uh, electrical. Okay, let's see the disadvantages for using the hydro. First one, they disturb the equilibrium of the ecosystem, because you want to build the whole power station, you need a large area. Large area means the forest and also the uh, the land. I mean, you must disturb. Okay, you will destroy the area for the flora and fauna. Okay, another place is displaces the local population. Okay, displaces the popula uh, the population. Another one is a high cost. Okay, the power station you want to build sure is a high cost. Okay, what should be advantageous? Okay, now we're going to see the second page. Okay, the advantages, uh, we're going to see the second page. Okay, this one is advantageous. First one is uh, clean, because we never burn anything. Sure, it's a clean one. Okay, does not emit any pollutant to the environment. Okay, number two is a renewable sources. Okay, number three is can develop a reaction of the area. I think this one you learn for geography, is it? When the situation got the uh, water res reservoir, you find it out, uh, the area become more famous. Then after that, they can control the flood. Okay, now we're going to see the some diagram about the hydropower station. Okay, this one is a hydro power station. Can you see they stay at the high location? After that, when it just open and intact the head bond, then you find it the water they come out. Come out in a high speed. When it just come out to the high speed, that means they got high uh, pressure, they got high energy, kinetic energy to turn the turbine. So when the turbine just turn, uh, this whole thing they must generate transformer, then go to generate electricity. Okay, this one is a one of the diagram. Okay, another one also like this, almost the same lah. They must store at the high location. Reservoir, keep all the water, then just the water just release to come up, turn the turbine also. Okay, so they must build together with the power station and also must be at the high location. Okay, then we continue our lesson to another power station. Okay, now number three. Number three, they go to solar energy. Solar energy means they're using the heat, the sunlight heat. Okay, so from here, the heat energy from the sun, they use to produce the steam. Then after that, convert become kinetic energy is used to drive the turbine, then electrical generator. So that means they're starting with the heat, then after that, kinetic, after that, turn the turbine, generate electricity. Okay, they must using the panel. This one is a solar panel. They use a sun energy to generate thermal energy.
to heat the water in the home. So that means the thermal must be absorbed the heat first. After that, they can convert, become electrical energy. So that means in house, all the water you can heat up by using the solar energy. So from here, absorb the heat, they go in. After the water, all the water inside your house become heat up. Then they boil, then after that, they come out from the tap. So that means you don't need using the electric energy to heat up your water, just using the solar energy. So they also can be keep. Although it's a night, they still can get the hot water. Okay. Now we can see some diagram about the solar energy. Okay, this one is a diagram exactly follow your notes. Now you see this part. Okay, now this one is uh, another process. Uh, how they collect the solar energy in big quantities. Okay, then everybody need to help because you just depend for the uh, TNB actually there's uh, no use because they need a big area to collect the solar energy. What they can do, they mean now they will provide uh, the situation, maybe that location is high, uh, can absorb the heat energy more easily, the sun heat. So after that, the area, maybe they offer, offer the resistance there. Uh, that means your house there, the, all, the, all the roof, they can build about the panel. Okay, panel, that means you need to pay yourself uh, because built above your house, is it? So after that, when you pay, maybe a big amount of the money you have to pay. So this panel, after that, they will collect the energy. Okay, when they collect the energy, that means your house can get the solar energy. You can use a free energy, but got extra. So extra, what to do? You see first part, solar panel, they convert the sunlight to the direct current. Okay, after that, they will join together with the converter. Converter, they will convert the DC, become the AC. Okay, after that, go to part three. Part three, that means they take electricity your home requires. Okay, after you use maybe got extra, they got requires one. Then after that, this part extra one, the electricity they will create and also the grid. That means after that they will collect all thing must be sent to the power station. So from this one situation, they can collect more of the solar energy. So maybe the first part you pay uh, expensive fees to build the solar panel. Then after a long time, maybe you can get back the money because they collect the money, they collect the sunlight from the from your house. After that, they will return back, return back the money for your bill. Okay, maybe the starting your your bill electric is higher. Then after that, becomes slow, becomes slow, slow. Then it become less. So they recover back. Okay, then they will pay you back again because you collect the solar energy from them. Okay, then you give to them. So this one is a one of the benefit you can earn the money lah. Okay, then we go through the advantages and also disadvantages. Okay, now we're going to see the advantages for the solar. Okay, disadvantage first. Disadvantage first one. Same again, require the large area. Okay, require a large area because you want to receive the sun sunlight. Okay, number two, efficient. Efficiency for the conversion quite low, just five percent. Okay, because not every day the sunlight is very, very. You can collect full, because sometimes they just the weather become bad. That means we cannot collect already. So from here they say five percent, and the cell production are very expensive. You want to buy the solar panel should be very expensive. Okay, you want to receive more. That means you need to buy. You want to build more about the panel. Now the intensity of the sun ray is collected is not consistent. Why? Because it depends to the weather condition and also the time of the day. Okay, because the sun sometimes uh, earlier they come out. Then sometimes we cannot see the sun. So that means you cannot receive it, the solar energy. They're not consistent. Okay, these advantages. Okay, now we're going to see the advantages. First one, clean. Because we do not burn anything. So don't have any pollutant of the environment. Then that is a renewable. And another one, the sunlight should be the free. Lah. They never claim any money from you. Okay, now we go to number four, nuclear energy. Nuclear energy we learn from the chapter five already. That's from the uranium. After that, you do the nuclear fission. Then you produce the energy, is it? 
Okay, this one is a nuclear power station. You can see the big diagram about the nuclear power station. Okay, uh, okay you can see this part. This one is a nuclear power station. We separate by two parts. First is a reactor, another one is a generator. Reactor, that means they're using the control road, remember? They do the nuclear fission. After they produce the energy, then they heat the water. Then the water becomes high temperature, already becomes steam. After it becomes steam, also same. Steam generator, they go up, they're using the high pressure, turn the turbine. Then the turbine generate electricity. So, but this one, if compared to the normal, we're using the fossil, uranium produce the energy should be higher, multiple, bigger than the fuel. Okay, so this one is why we're using the, uh, the other country, they're using the nuclear, la. but sure got disadvantages because the danger is very, very high. That means you need to do the sum at once of the safety to cover this situation. Then we go to the next one. Okay, another diagram also same. There's a nuclear power station. Okay, also using the control rod after that nuclear reaction. Then they produce a high heat. Then the steam also in high pressure. Then the last part should be the same. Turbine turning, then generate electricity. Okay, this one is what we learn about the nuclear energy, how to produce. Okay, also same, we need to know about the advantages and disadvantages. Okay, disadvantages, first one, expensive. Okay, you want to build this one, the power station, sure expensive. Okay, number two, harmful effect for the radiative radiation to the human. Example, alpha, beta, and also the gamma. Okay, what is the advantages? Produce more energy. I think this one is a one of the advantages only. They can produce the energy multiple don't know how many times from the normal power station okay let's see the last one there's a wind energy wind energy that's actually not suitable to use reason noisy and also you need to find a very big area to build the uh, windmill then you get back the efficiency very low somehow because they want to depend the weather when the wind to come, when the wind want to come, then we cannot control also. So the kinetic energy of the wind rotate blade connected to the rotor. That means the rotate blade must be joined together with the rotor of the electrical generator after that produces electrical energy. Okay, let's see some diagram for the windmill. Okay, this one is a windmill. So the rotor must be joined together with the blade. Okay. After that, you can see the wind just come, the wind made turn. Then the rotor must be inside. Okay, after that, turn the rotor together with the turbine. Okay, the turbine will turn together, then go to the transformer. Then they make the voltage become higher, then generate electricity. So the situation you need to turn all the windmill, the wind must be very strong. Then after that, then you need to generate, then you need to take a long time to collect it so this one efficiency is a very very low so we just spend more some more money some more because you want to build this area so this one is another energy but not so suitable for to use it okay now we're going to see the uh, advantages and also disadvantages okay let's see the first one disadvantages First one, they say require large area. Uh, you want to build, must be large area. Number two, the speed of rotation is not consistent. You don't know when they will fast, when they will slow. Also depend to the weather condition. Then number three, they produce the noise. Okay, if you stay just near the area, the noise should be very high. Okay, advantages is a clean, do not pollute. Okay, non-renewable and also free. So this one is a five of the energy. Uh, we use it uh, for the renewable and also non-renewable. Okay, non-renewable normally is a burning. Lah. Okay, after that the renewable, uh, non-renewable, that one is a burning. Renewable normally is a natural one. We get it from the natural. Okay, now I say the chapter. 
factor 3.5 they got one of the formula okay now we're going to see what is the formula here okay the formula is about the transmission of electricity okay let's see the transmission of the electricity the major problem of the transmit electrical energy from a power station to the user is the power loss because from a power station you want to go until to your house sure the power will loss okay in the cable as a heat energy because long cable long cable means the resistance become high already okay so from here we can see the formula <coughs> okay power loss in the cable this one is the formula so we can write power loss i squared r i means the current pass through the cable uh, then r is the resistor of the cable <coughs> sorry okay you can see about the explanation there this one power we call it as a power loss power loss in the cable then the i is a current flow in the cable then the r is a resistance of the cable okay this one is to find the power loss okay to find the current flow uh, this one current flow means uh, we need to using p equal vi that means the power supply this one is a power supply this one is a power loss so the current for power loss and current for the power supply pass through the cable actually should be the same so from here the i stand for current flow cable also same this one is a power transmitted uh, power start to transmit just now is power loss okay voltage transmit through the cable so we got two formula actually the two formula we learned before p equal vi we learned from the uh, the chapter two already okay after that the power loss actually we also learned this formula but we never take that as a power loss but now this one situation we take this one as a power loss okay when it pass through the cable Okay, now we're going to see one, the first one example question. Okay, now the power station, the generate the 40 kilowatt. Okay, first one, they generate 40 kilowatt electric power. They're using the power transmission line, the resistance 0 0.8. Okay, what is the power waste due to the resistance of the transmission cable voltage? Transmit 520 kilo. So they want to make the differences. Okay, we found the A first. Okay, they want to find out about the power loss, is it? Okay, what is the power loss? So from here, we want to find the power loss. We just can use the first formula. Lah. Okay, we're using the first formula. The problem is we do know what is the current. Okay, we do know the current. So we cannot find out the power loss. So from here, we find out the wood first. Okay, we find the wood first. Then we find the current. Okay, let's see the A. Power input. Power station generate 40 kilo. Okay, 40 kilo, there's a times 3. Okay, after that, P equal VI. This one is a 500. Okay, we find the I first. Okay, the I should be the same one. Using for the sending and also the loss. So the I from here, I get it, there's a 80 ampere. Okay, 80 ampere. So that means from the 80 MP here, I want to find about the power loss. Okay, power loss equal to the I squared R, is it? So 80, you need to square first. Then multiply with the R, I is 0 0.8. So I find it the first one. If I'm using 500 volt, the power loss is a 57, uh, 5,720 watt. Okay, this one is a power loss. Okay, so now we need to go another situation. Okay, another situation is I make the voltage become highest. Okay, so I need to find the B first. Okay, the current you don't need to find, the current should be the same. So we use straightforward power loss. Okay, I squared, XD is it? Oh, sorry, I we need to find again because your vote is a different. Sorry, yeah. if the volt is the same, the current should be the same. But now the situation, the voltage, they adjust already. When the voltage adjusts, that means we need to find the new current again. Okay, 
rotate different means your eye also will be changes okay this one is a p equal vi so we're going to see this part we find the i again okay p for 40 is it 40 times 10 power 3 okay now your v will become uh, equal your v is a 20k 20k yeah then after that i so you find the i now should be smaller like, because your voltage become very high i just get it there's a two ampere two ampere pass through to the cable okay now you can write about the power loss so your power loss formula is i you go to square that's a four then multiply the resistor also the same 0 0.8 so i get it the power loss i just lost how many 3.2 watt so this one question actually they want to tell want to tell you what the question they want to tell you you want to reduce the power loss what you can adjust you adjust the voltage okay when you adjust the voltage become higher your current automatically become less when the current automatically become less your power loss will be reduced okay we go back to see the formula power loss okay you want to reduce the power loss either you make the current become drop either you make the resistance become drop okay this one is a two situation how to reduce the power loss okay so from here we go to explain I'll explain is later explain your explanation is it okay so later by explanation so we go to the example two first a power station generate 80 megawatt of the electric power at the voltage 80 kilovolt through the cable resistor 5 ohm so from here the question 2 okay they got a until d uh, we're going to see the page number 3 okay page number 3 okay now we're going to see the power loss due to the transmission cable so we do one by one power loss okay okay first one we know the power loss must be i squared i is it so we're going to see the question we got i or not we just get the power generate 80 milli um, mega 80 mega what they want is a power supply power input lah. then after that we get the info voltage 80 times 10 power of 3 then after the resistor should be 5 ohm this one is what the info we get it okay now they want to find the power loss we must get the current lah. so from here we file the current first okay so from here i cut the this formula first okay we find out the current so must be 80 times 10 power of 6 equal vi vi is 80 times 10 power of 3 okay we find the i first so the i from here i get it there's a 1000 ampere okay now we can solve it power loss should be 1000 square then your resistor is a 5 ohm so i get it the power loss here is a 5 milli because you take the thousand you go to square so it become five milliwatt okay when i when the voltage is a 80 kilovolt lah. so now we're going to find the question b percentage of the power loss so percentage so you take the po over pi multiply 100 percent that one is called efficiency is it so we do the calculation when you put in all the things so the answer should be 6.25 percent okay this one milli this one milli then later we can cut lah. then we go to the c c is the efficiency of the power station okay efficiency of the power station okay 6.25 actually what's the meaning percentage of the power loss this one is a loss so loss ah efficiency actually how many efficiency the meaning is you already use function one is how many so we take 100% minus loss one. 
So I just lost 6.25. Yeah. So finally, I get it. Uh, I get it. The uh, answer is 93.75. This one is the efficiency. So from here, you need we they ask you how many percent you lost it. So you take the output, output loss over the input. Then we know the percentage you lost is how many. Then after that, you want to find efficiency. Then you go to minus. Then we know 93.75. Okay, last one. Last one is a D. Potential different along the cable. So potential different along the cable. V, this one not along the cable. This one is starting. Along the cable, normally we're using V equal IR. That one is when you go through the cable. So I is 1000. So your R is a 5. So I get it. The V, when it pass through the cable, that's a 5000 volt. Okay, so that is this one is the answer for A, B, C, and also the D. Okay, now I need to go is the situation that reduce the power loss. How to reduce the power loss through the transmission line? Okay, let's see the transmission line. They show it's a very long distance. So you want to reduce the power loss. So we write the equation first. P loss equal to i squared r you want to reduce this part the i must be dropped or you say the r also drop that you can reduce the power loss so from here the first one they want to solve the equation they're using the thick cable remember the thick cable okay r is 1 over a inversely proportional with the area so i using the thick cable la. when i using thick cable the resistance will be low so they're using the large cross-sectional area to reduce the resistance because power loss directly proportional with the resistance so from here the aluminium alloy are used because they are cheaper and also much lighter compared to the copper okay they're using the aluminium then after that they're lighter compared to the copper lah. So, but the reason we don't want to choose about the thick wire because that's a very expensive. Because your cable is too long already. If your cable too long, the resistance should high already. Then your changes become thick wire. That means you need to spend more. Spend more because the cable too long. So from here, we ignore the resistance. We're going to see the current. How to make the current drop? Okay, now they say B. Reducing the current through the cable because power loss also directly proportional with the I square. To overcome this one problem, electrical energy is transmitted at a high voltage because, okay, now we go back to the C, input power, VI. Okay, now I want to reduce the power loss. I need to uh, reduce current, is it? Okay, the current sent and the current until you achieve to the cable also is the same current so what we need to do i reduce this one current how to make this one current reduce increase the voltage remember the first example question when you're using the voltage is too high the current becomes smaller when the current becomes smaller the transmit the power loss will be reduced so from here this one is a one of the method we need to reduce the power loss transmit at the high voltage because current and voltage is uh, inversely proportional so the transformer we need to use though because you want to reduce the voltage and increase the voltage one is it so from here transformer are used to increase and also decreases the voltage and the transformer can only be function using the alternating current so your house or the current to go in, sure is the alternating current. So that's why this one is a why the reason alternating current is used in the transmission electricity. Because we need to use transformer. Okay? We need to using the transformer when starting should be the high voltage from the power station. Why they're using high voltage from the power station? You just got one reason. Because you want to reduce the current. Okay, reduce the current pass through the cable. Why you want to reduce the current? Because I want to reduce power loss. 
Okay, after from the power station, finish sending already. Now want to go to housing area. What do you think about the uh, the voltage? Okay, power loss no more already because it already passed through the long cable. Now until the housing area, just more area. Now the voltage too high, just now too high already. So that means they need to reduce. Reduce the voltage until go your house. Your house is how many? 240 volt only. So they must be reducing. How to reduce? Again, transformer. Okay, now we're going to see the nation, national grid network. Huh? So this one is talking about the map, how they go to send the voltage. Okay, now you see we start from the power station. Okay, let's see the power station. Okay, power station here. Okay, when starting, 25 kilovolt. Then they're using the transformer. This one must be the long distance. Huh? Transformer to step up become 132 kilovolt because they want to reduce power loss. Okay, until this part, they go to this area already. This area become the small area. So from here, they need to step, step down the transformer. Okay, step down transformer, the first one must go to the heavy industry. Heavy industry using the wood should be higher than our housing area. Lah. So from here, they step down, become 33 kilovolt. Then go to light industry, also step down again, become 11. Then go to the office, they step down again, become 450. Then go to school and also your house, there's a 240 volt. So that means the whole process for the national grid network, we using transformer, just one time they're using step up. When you see the situation is power station. Then the rest, we are using step down transformer. Okay, then you see the diagram here, then we go to the explanation. The national grid network is a network that transmission the line. We've linked all the major power stations in the country, which all the major users such as the home, office, cities, and also the factory. Now that electrical energy generator in the power station where is the voltage is increased by using the step-up transformer to reduce the energy loss in the cable before transmission via the national grid. So that means before they send to your area, they must increase the voltage first reduce the energy loss okay now they're going to say at the substation okay the substation before reach to the various of the consumer substation first before go to your house uh, the high voltage must be reduced by step down transformer so first one is go to heavier industry low industry office last one is a domestic and also supply by 240 volt only so this one is the process how they send the uh, energy to your house the wood so from here they want to reduce the power loss so they choose the situation is re, uh, increasing the voltage okay let's see some of the diagram about the national grid network okay that's uh, this one how the grid works Okay, first part, can you see this part is a power station, the left-hand side, primary coin. Uh, this part is uh, uh, the, from the power station, then you need to step up transformer. Then they're using this part, step up transformer. So from here, the step up transformer at the power station, increasing the voltage. So this one is a power station, uh, they go increasing the voltage. After increasing, they want to send to the another area, so from here, they need to reduce by using step down transformer. So step down transformer. So they want to decreasing the voltage. So from here they will explain the step up transformer has a less turn in the primary, then more turn in the secondary. So this one is a step up. Then after they go to another area, after send ready, they want to go to small area, they become step down again. So this one we call substation. So the substation they will go to the home, the light industry, and heavier industry. So this one is a process. Electricity from power station, step up. After that, network of the pilot, then after that, the step down, then go to the substation. Okay, then we go another one. Okay, this one also the same. National grid network at the center. Okay, we got thermal power plants. We also got the renewable energy. Okay, from here, they must go to the step up transformer. 
then when the Net National Grid Network that come up, sure it's a step down transformer. Then we go to 14 summer. Okay, this one is, uh, okay, this one is later. I'll show this one first. Then we go to explain about advantages and disadvantages first before I show you the diagram. Okay, we're going to see advantages uh, for this one, National Grid Network. Okay, first one they say easy to manage. Okay, easy to manage the National Grid Network. Okay, regional control. They're easy to control. Switching the center enable the power to be sent where, where, when you need it. So where you want, they sure will send it. Number two, they say less interruption and also the continuous lead. So this one is a regional control and switching the center allows some station and the line to be shut down for the maintenance work without cutting off the consumer. Maybe one area they shut down, another area they never shut down. Lah. So they never disturb for your area. Okay, number three, they say reduce the cost. Why reduce the cost? Because you increase the voltage already. When you increase the voltage, you reduce the power loss. So that's why they can reduce the you reduce about the cost. Number four, easy to control and also regulate. At the peak period, okay, example, uh, the Chinese New Year or your some uh, Raya. So this one at the peak period, lah, so more generator can be shut, uh, switch on. Switch on area, depends the area, lah. normally you will go back to your kampung, is it? So the area, they must stand by the high peak of the generator, stand by at that. And maybe the city, they will reduce, okay, low demand already. So then some generator can be turned off. So this one is how to control and also regulate the power uh, national grid network during the peak season okay so this one is the advantages okay now you can see some at once one now they say smart ready okay we're going to see the smart some more okay what's the smart uh? okay this one so the yesterday and tomorrow what's the difference uh? first one you're going to see the first one the purple color one they say a few large power stations, they're still using the non-renewable. So you find it, this one can get the pollution. Okay, now we change already. Many small power, the products, they're from the renewable energy. Then the second one, the market. Okay, maybe you just go one area, two area, something like this. Lah. Okay, you see, the coming soon. Okay, you find it, the national grid network, they will go more areas some more. Okay, the number three, they based on the large power line. They're using the larger power line. Larger power line, they mean your power loss. Lah. So from here, this one, they're including the small scale. Reduce the power loss. Okay, number four, top to bottom. Just one direction only, distribution. This one, they can up and down. That means now the direction, they can go any way. Okay, last one, uh, this one, they're only paying. Okay, pay only. But this one, consumer can earn some more, not pay only. That means you can earn some more. So this one is a calming one, the National Grid Network. Okay, then we're going to see another one also same. This one is a traditional. Then this one is a future smart grid. Traditional, you can see just one way only. They go to the school, go to the multi and culture, something like this. So you see the future. Uh, future, they got so many supplier then the supplier from your house also go and supply to another way so not just one way maybe one of the object that can supply two or three supplier so you can see so many chabang here okay just like the tree so this one is a future smart grid okay so this one is the differences yesterday and tomorrow what will happen so this one is a just short of the notes so hopefully you will understand what I'm talking about. So what you need to do is you need to complete the tutorial. So tutorial 3.5, just last question only. Some of the objective, then also got an essay question. So you finish it. So we will discuss when the school just open. Remember, bring your notes, go to school together. So I will see you soon. Uh, hopefully you... Okay, lah, come to school, we see together and discuss all the questions we do. Okay, so from here, thank you for your watching. So, see you.
Thank you.